because there's important brand new filings. Now, these are from pretrial motions, the kind of clashes that are about whether to dismiss a case, whether it's going to go to trial. But also, what I'm about to show you is one of the most thorough previews we've gotten yet about how Jack Smith intends to put Trump on trial. This is a clue to the DOJ's thinking as they prepare the most important trial in the history of the Department of Justice. And that's true if they lose. If they put a trial on and they lose and the president, former president, walks, well, that's going to be a big deal, too, for everyone who works at the Justice Department. So here we go. The first headline, not obvious. Remember, DOJ did not indict Trump for being a formal part of the storming of the Capitol on the 6th. They're not trying to prove Trump literally incited the attack. And that was, remember, how congressional Democrats made their argument for impeaching Trump for inciting insurrection. Manager Schiff talked about incitement. Well, here's what's going on tonight. Legally, Jack Smith knows that they indicted on more narrow grounds. Not the whole thing, you were part of everything, we got to prove it all. No, much more narrow. What I'm going to tell you, though, and I'm going to read from it, is that the new filing shows that Smith will still deploy that day as evidence and proof of the criminal plot. So we're learning that January 6th will still actually be vital to the trial. And this also confronts Donald Trump's lawyers, who had made this long-shot request. They wanted the court to strike any references to the insurrection from the Trump indictment. But reading from the new Jack Smith filing, it explains the view that Trump's conspiracies culminated and converged when, on January 6th, he attempted to obstruct the congressional certification and that he directed a crowd of his supporters to the Capitol. Now, this is key. When you see that language, directed this angry crowd, Smith is arguing that Trump directed the crowd as proof of criminal intent. That's apart from the fact that the DOJ didn't technically charge him as part of that sedition crowd. And then the filing goes on that Trump continued to stoke their anger while they were rioting and obstructing the certification. So that is evidence. As for the intent, Smith wants to make the case at trial that Trump's beliefs about the winner of the election don't even matter. Just as a company executive can be guilty of fraud for using knowingly false statements, the filing notes that Trump used deceit to push people to steal the race, and that alone is enough to prove a crime. And that is even if, and I told you I'd read you the key part, here is a key part, even if he subjectively believed that the election was rigged. And the conclusion here is important. Smith writing through his filing, quote, Trump stands alone in American history for his alleged crimes. No other president has engaged in conspiracy and obstruction to overturn valid election results and illegitimately retain power. So, what I just read to you, that's the kind of thing you're also going to hear in a closing argument, whether it is by one of the lawyers at DOJ or Smith himself. We are kind of seeing ahead to what they're going to say. We're also seeing the decisions Trump has to make, because ju the judge here told Trump that he's going to have to choose or lose this so-called blame the lawyers defense by mid-January. And that matters, because if Trump wants to argue that the problems were caused, say, by his lawyers, let's be clear, he gets to make that defense. He can make it. But the judge is saying it will carry a cost. His own lawyers, we know, have already been confessing in related cases. And the judge is telling Trump, if you want to go down that road and you want to invoke the defense, hey, it was all my lawyers, then by doing that, by, quote, invoking the defense, you will waive that secretive and usually powerful attorney-client privilege. <clears throat> now, this matters in a way that so many of these issues are different when you get into court. Because when Trump does this with PR and politics, he spins, he tries to have it both ways. Some of his folks say, oh, okay, we'll accept it. Or they like it. They say, oh yeah, he's trolling. He's doing it both ways. But this is right now failing in court. The judge saying Trump cannot have it both ways. He can keep his legal advice secret, try to, or he can open it all up and try to convince jurors it was all these other lawyers' fault. As for that and how that works, well, another Trump lawyer who did time has seen this movie before. Donald cares for no one or anything other than himself. He will now start blaming things on the lawyers. Well, the lawyers told me to do it. Quite frankly, the lawyers told me. I'm not a lawyer. That's what I hired them for. And he's going to throw them under the bus, and they know it, and that's why they're all out there protecting themselves. 
Now, whatever you think of how many lawyers have been pulled all the way down this road and then thrown under that proverbial bus, some things are changing. Lawyers are confessing earlier. Lawyers are cutting deals. Mr. Meadows cut a deal that Chris Christie says is going to convict Trump. And Jack Smith has a plan. He is methodical. And he is moving towards that plan in March. Not all pretrial motions are the same. Um, sometimes in the news we end up discussing just the thing, like, oh, the, the date, what comes out of it. What struck me, and I'm very curious what struck you, about this recent set of uh, Smith filings was a kind of a preview of the case and some nuance about how they would uh, use the insurrection. They don't need to prove that he was a literal seditionist. That's not the charge. Um, but what kind of arguments are going to make a trial? What, what did you think? Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, I, I think the, the way I thought this was being teed up was it is true he is not charged with sedition, uh, and that requires the use of violence. But he is charged with obstruction, um, with trying to prevent Congress from counting the electoral votes. And basically what you had was the government saying that what happened on January 6 was part of that conspiracy. That was the whole, when, when other things had not worked, when pressure on the states, when pressure on DOJ, when pressure on Pence, when all these different aspects of the conspiracy were not working, sort of the final last stand was the rally and essentially sending the troops in to uh, march on Congress. It's not necessary, though, to show that he incited the violence, and in fact, he's not charged with that. Where I think this is going to end up, though, is not sort of striking everything about January 6th, but I think it's really more geared to an evidentiary call about how much of that evidence will the judge allow a trial? Um, because th it really is the defense saying, don't allow although they say strike all inflammatory evidence, what really is going to come, I think, is the judge saying, how much of it, government, do you need? What is it that you're proposing to do? Um, because it would be unfair to have all of the sort of gory details if the government cannot connect it to the defendant. So leave aside that it's Donald Trump and whatever one might think about him. Um, the issue is really, you know, can you connect the violence to him. And I think one of the ways that the government says that they should be allowed to use it is at least how the former president was using it after the fact, where he saw the violence occurring and then used that to try and intimidate and coerce people. So it'll be an interesting argument, but I think it's going to be much more about sort of how much of this evidence comes in.